So, I'll be talking about how to enter into God, His presence. So, there's a verse in the Bible, in uh, Psalms 19, 91, verse 1 says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible is saying this, the secret place of the most highest is the place of his tabernacle. The very presence of God. Ye who dwelt in the presence of the most highest God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. It's being in his home. So when we are in his presence, we are, we are in the secret place where the most high God becomes our dwelling place. So the earthly tabernacle will teach us something about the true heavenly tabernacle. So the natural tabernacle will teach us about the spiritual realities. So it will give us insight into what we go through as we enter into the presence of God. As we enter in the spirit, the true heavenly sanctuary of God. We have, uh, we have uh, descriptions of the tabernacle that Moses built in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 15 to 27 and chapter 40. So there primarily there were three compartments to the tabernacle. The first thing was in that compartment, there was the outer court. And there was the, there was the inner court and the holy of the holiest or the most holy. So we're going to read in the book of Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. The Bible says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body and since we have a great priest over the house of god let us draw near to god with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings having our heart sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and have our bodies washed with pure water. The whole testament, tabernacle, that Moses built in the wilderness is a copy, uh, is a copy and the shadow of the sanctuary in heavenly, true, the true heavenly tabernacle. And we see Hebrews 8, verse uh, uh, 1. And he's saying that now the main point of what we are saying is this. We do, we do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. And to say that, and who saves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a merely human being. Verse 5 say that they save at a sanctuary that is a copy and the shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was owned when he was about to build the tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern show you on the mountain. Moses, the tabernacle, God instructed Moses to build it in the way that God wanted this mountain, this uh, this tabernacle to be to be to be built. 
So I'm going to start with the outer coat. With the outer coat. The outer coat contained the, the altar of sacrifice and a browser, the, the browser laver of the water for washing. In the outer coat, that's Exodus 27, verse 1 to 2, you can see the instruction that, the, that God gave Moses. And in the outer coat, in the old in, in Old Testament, in the Exodus, when God was instructing Moses how this tabernacle supposed to look like. So in the in, in the in the tabernacle, there was what we called the brazo laver for washing. When we read the book of Exodus 30, uh, 30 verse um, 17, the Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a brass basin with each brass stand for washing place, it be, uh, for washing, be, uh, be, for washing, place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and, and put water in it. Aaron and his sons, that's 19, Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. And also when they approach the, the altar to minister by presenting a food, a food offering to the Lord, 21, verse 21, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is to be a lasting audience for Aaron and his descendants for generation to generation. So there was a curtain that separate the outer court from the inner court. So our, our spiritual experience, experience entering the, the entering the true tabernacle. The first thing we know we talk about is this, the outer court. The outer court, it is our journey into the presence of God. This place, it is where uh, it, it begins. It is where our journey begins to enter into the presence of God. So the outer court is the process of making that decision to move into the presence of God. And getting ourselves ready to meet God. So in the outer court, we have the altar sacrifice, a place of surrender and offering up spiritual sacrifice. So we offer here on the, on the outer court, we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. And this is what we read in the book of Romans, Romans 12, 1 say that therefore, Paul is saying, therefore, I age you brothers and sisters in view of God, his mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing God. And the Bible says that this is your true and the proper worship. It is here in the outer court where you offer your bodies as the, as, as the living sacrifice. Here on the outer court, we, we, we bring praise, adoration as a spiritual sacrifice. So when we come in the church, we come in the church, we, we praise and we, we, uh, we, we begin to adore God. So it is here we bring praise and adoration as a spiritual uh, sacrifice. It's here on the outer court, we do good deeds, we share and give as part of the sacrifice. We offer up, up in the outer court. It is here where we offer all the good stuff, the good deeds you share and giving as the part of the sacrifice. And the Bible is saying the book of Hebrews uh, 13, 15 to 16, saying that through Jesus, therefore let us continually 
offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of leaves that openly confers his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifice, God is placed. It is in this outer cold time where we are, and it's in this journey that we are in, in order for us to go into the inner court. And we read again in Psalms 95, one verse to say that, Come, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exalt, and exalt him with music and song. And these, it is the outer God. We are still in the journey. We are still in the journey of coming into the inner God. And Psalms 100 verse 1 to 5 say that, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. This is the how we come Enter his gate with thanksgiving in the house of the Lord and his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. It's when we come in the church, we come into his presence to give thanks. Thanks to him and praise him. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. So it is in this outer court where we offer all these sacrifices to the Lord. We also have in the outer court, we also have the, 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 the laser brows, a place of washing and cleansing. We wash ourselves from, from the iniquities of the day, the iniquities of life with the word of God. It is in the outer court. We saw that in the outer court, there was the blossom, a place where they, in, in the physical tabernacle, where they're supposed to wash their feet and clean themselves before they can come into the inner court. It's the same way with us today. We wash ourselves of the in, impurities of the day. We wash ourselves, the, we wash ourselves from our sins the impurities of life with the word of God. We wash it through with the word of God. So you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. That's John, John 15, 3 is saying. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. This is the word of God clean us from all the impurity, the, from all the impu in, impurities. So we see by, we see to, 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 we see by washing with all water through the world, through the word and the, uh, through the word and the work of the spirit. So he saved us. This is uh, Titus 3 verse 5 said, He saved us not because of righteous things we had, we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So we cleanse our hearts of an evil conscience our evil cons conscience with the blood of Jesus. This is still in the outer court. So the act of the flesh, as we know, like this is the time we know Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21. It talks about the desires of the flesh that we need to get rid of the impurities of the impurities of uh, the impurities of ourselves. 
Galatians 5 verse 19 say that the acts of the fle- of the acts of the flesh are obvious like sexual immorality you have to get rid of it you have adultery you have to get rid of it jealous you have to get get rid of it S- uh, selfish ambitions you have to get rid of drunkenness everything that does not glorify the Lord you need to get rid of those things so this is all this cleansing and everything that you need to get rid it's happened here on the outer code so however we cannot settle down in the outer code because our journey it is to enter into the inner court so some of us some of us some of us we make mistakes of just doing the cleaning offering up spiritual sacrifice then leave we remain as 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 an outer court christian or outer court believers that will only remain on one place so we never go we, we never go past what is done in the outer court So I'm inviting you to go past the outer court and come into the the inner court. So we have to be believers, not believers that we need to experience the, to come to this, to experience the, 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 to experience the, the holy of the holiest, to enter into the holy of the holiest. So, and then now we go into the inner court. The inner court, or we, they call it also the holy place. The inner court has a land stand according to Exodus, how God was instructing Moses. So the inner court has the lamp stand, the table of the, sh- of the show braid, and the altar of incense. On the, uh, uh, on the lamp, there is oil and fire producing light representing illuminations and revelation so this is the uh, what call this this is the il- illuminations and and revelation which the holy spirit brings into our lives ephesians 1 17 says in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of riches of God is grace. So the shower bread presents our daily bread. That's why Matthew 6, 11 says that give us today our daily bread. It is the meeting, it, it's, it, is the, it is the meeting of our spiritual needs, our spiritual needs through the word. And when Jesus was tempted in the desert, that's Matthew 4, verse 4, uh, uh, Jesus said that men, men shall not live by bread alone, but, fr- but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. It is also the bread of divine provision, of divine provision, of having our natural needs met. And and, and uh, 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 Philippians chapter 4, 19, and, and, and they say, it's it like, my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory. So that need, the need of healing, the need of deliverance. So the altar in the, in the, in the inner court, there was also the, the altar of the, uh, the altar of incense. The altar of incense is the place of prayer and a place of intercession. Psalms 141 verse one, uh, verse two said that, May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the, may the lifting up of, of my hands be like, the, be like the evening sacrifice. Amen. So the, the inner court is the place of prayer, petition, 
an intercession. It is a place of hope. The, the outer court and the inner court represent our duties as Christian. So what we need to do to move into the place where we really want to be the holy of the holiest. The outer court and the inner court speaks of praying, being, being in the place of intercession, intercession, asking God to give us our daily bread, praying about the things we need, our spiritual sacrifice, are called to make. It involves our responsibilities and discipline as believers. So most of us live either in the outer court or in, in, or, or in the inner court. We live in the place of sacrifice, giving, praising, pray, prayer requests, intercession, worship, and so on. We experience a major of the major of the, the spirit's work, the oil in the lampstand. We talk to God about things we, 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 we need, we have need of. We cast our curse, our worries, our case to, upon him. We look for direction. We fast. However, we're still in the outer court and the inner court experience. Let's talk about, so they still, they still the most, the most of holy place that we are welcoming, welcoming to enter and dwell in. It is the holy of the holiest. The holy of the oldest is also called the most holy place. So in the holy of the holiest, there is a covenant, the covenant and mercy, both of which come from God alone, only God alone. So there is nothing we can do when we are in the, when we are already in the holy of the holiest place. There is no sacrifice being made here. No incense, no intercession, no more warfare or no more doing. Here it is God who is operating. Here it's God who is deciding. So we are in the holy of the holiest. The holy of the holiest is where the glory of God dwells. This is holy holy ground. You remember Moses when he met, he had an encounter with God in the burning bush. God told him, Moses, Moses, the place where you are, it is in a, ho it's, it's a holy ground. It's a holy ground. In the holy of the holiest, there is a new level of the, in, of the intensity of the presence of God. So we are gazing at his beauty. We, so we are captured. We are captured with his absolute majesty, majesty and covered with his glory. It is this place, the holy of the holiest. We are overwhelmed by his presence. We, 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 uh, we are overwhelmed by his presence. We must just be in this, in this place, the holy of the holiest. We need to be just still. We must just be still and know that is God. The Bible is saying in Psalms 40, 46, verse 6, that he, six say that he says, be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in, in the earth. To the world still means to be quiet, means alone. And to know, to know it is to come to know by experience. Experience, perceive and find and see.
So when you are in this holy of the holiest, it's God is operating. Or oh, what we have to do, it just we have to be still and know that is God. In knowing that is God, it is by experiencing. Perceive and find and see. There is nothing else to do but to look at his glory, to gaze upon his beauty. This is the place to allow, allowing God to transform us into his presence, into his presence, into his image as we see his glory, as we, the way he did to Moses. This is the place where God transform us into his image as we, we see his glory. Habakkuk 2 verse 20 say that the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. What happens when we pursue him and seek his face? We are changed. There is no one who can, who can spend, spend meaningful meaningful time with God and come out unchanged. No. The presence of God changes us and, and, and we will end up experiencing the fullness of joy. As we spend in his presence, our strength is renewed. When we stand, when we, we, as we spend time in his presence, our strength is renewed when we are awake. When we are awake. The Bible is saying that Isaiah 40, 40, 28 to 31, it said, Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the end of the earth. You will not grow tired or worry, or, or, or worry, and increases the power of the weak. He increases the power of the weak. He will not grow tired or worry, and his understanding no one can fathom or can understand. He gives strength to the worry and increases the power of, of the weak. Every youth grow tired and worry and worry and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not, and not worry. And they will walk and not faint. In the presence, when you are in this stage of the holy of the holiest, you are, you are also going to experience convictions. You're going to experience convictions. So we see that the presence of God causes deep convictions of sin, offenses, and other things in our lives that are not pleasing God. So, beloved, let us seek the face of God. Let us dwell, dwell ourselves into the presence of God. Let us seek more or more of God. So shalom, be blessed.